kidding me? This review was originally going to be a lot shorter than it currently is. I bought State of Decay the day it came out as an early access title on Steam, which was late in September. At that point in time, the game was essentially complete. It was buggy, glitchy, poorly optimized, had a lack of graphics options, lack of resolution options, and had terrible mouse and keyboard controls. But it was fully playable with a gamepad and fully beatable. I had a lot of footage recorded, as well as the majority of the script actually, but I decided to give the developers a chance and wait until the game was officially released before reviewing it. A month and a half later, I received the final product and it is buggy, glitchy, poorly optimized, has a lack of graphics customization, lack of resolution options, and has terrible mouse and keyboard controls. <sighs> The footage you'll be viewing here will consist of day one early access stuff as well as stuff from the final version because honestly, all that has changed was that the performance has slightly increased, the white outline around characters was finally removed, and the bloom was toned down a little bit. Everything else is the same. Um, Multi-GPU is still not supported, nor are resolutions higher than 1080p. And the mouse control feels like they literally put in a 360 pad emulator and bound the right analog stick to the mouse. That's how floaty and awful it feels. If there is one compliment that I can give to the developers, is that it is a faithful port. They have, in fact, ported over all of the bugs and glitches from the 360 version to the PC faithfully. State of Decay, from a conceptual standpoint, is a game that I always wanted to play. It revolves around maintaining a community of survivors, just about all who are playable and have their own unique character traits and skills, while also going out scavenging for supplies that ensure the survival of your group and interacting with other enclaves of survivors. The game starts off with you, as Marcus, and your buddy Ed, both of whom are returning from a two-week long camping trip in the middle of nowhere, away from electricity, technology, annoying people. Despite the fact that Marcus is a clerk and Ed is an accountant, they quickly master the arts of dropkicking zombies and smashing their brains in with a 2x4. They come across Maya Torres, an ex-soldier, Ed ends up getting bitten by a zombie, and they make their way to a church that has been set up as a stronghold by a group of survivors. The main goal is to survive and complete the story-based missions. Your base, which is also called a home in this game, requires constant resources to ensure the survival of the group. Food, medicine, ammunition are all mandatory, followed by materials to ensure the upkeep of your various facilities, and lastly fuel, which is used to create mines. All of these are randomly generated on the map, and are of limited quantity, and are consumed daily. To minimize the dependency on scavenging and to make your home safer, you can create outposts. Outposts create a safe area around them, where zombies do not spawn, and if you outfit your outpost with mines, they will instantly detonate zombie hordes. Also, if the outpost is created in a building that has resources, your daily consumption of said resource will decrease, as the outpost will supply your community until that area becomes depleted. If you create enough outposts of a particular resource, you can actually break even and not lose any supply. I was able to do this with medicine, ammo, and fuel, but for the life of me, I could never get it to work with construction materials, despite having five fucking outposts of the same damn thing. There are a variety of facilities that you construct within your home. You can build a bunkhouse for additional beds, workshop to repair cars and weapons, as well as create additional items, a garden to grow your own food, a training area to improve stamina, and so on and so forth. As you complete various objectives or just bring back scavenged goods, the morale of the community increases, you gain friendship bonuses, and you also get influence points. Once you max out the friendship with a certain character, they become playable. Developers claim this is important because of permadeath, I claim bullshit because not a single person in my community has died in my first 24 hour long playthrough. I'll elaborate on how easy this game gets a little later. The influence system is actually a neat way of creating currency in this post-apocalyptic world. Money has no value anymore, obviously. The whole community shares their resources with each other and you basically use influence to borrow things from the supply locker or to convince people to do things for you. So if you've done nothing for the community, you have no influence over anyone, and as a result, no one is going to let you take things out of the supply locker. But if you've rescued people, brought back many resources, and so on and so forth, you'll have more influence over people, and just a few hours into the game, you'll actually have more influence points than there are things to spend on. Characters level up individually and have their own unique traits and skills. 
There are a select number of characters who are the same through each playthrough, but the rest of the surviving population is randomly generated, just as the resources are. One thing that I very much do like with the way they handle the RPG system is that your skills and traits level up as you use them. If you run a lot, you'll improve your cardio. If you beat zombies to death, you'll improve your fighting skills. If you use a lot of weapons, you'll improve your shooting. It's a nice progression system because it makes sense. All of this, combined in a low-budget game done by an indie studio for the mere price of $20 American sounds too good to be true, right? That's because it is. State of Decay is one extremely overrated and overhyped game. After a couple of hours of playing, you'll quickly discover just how broken the mechanics are, how grindy and repetitive the random events are, and just how shallow the overall game is. State of Decay has some very interesting mechanics, but none of them are executed well. The combat is ridiculously simplistic. Just keep mashing the X button on your 360 pad, and when the zombie's on the floor, press Y. That's pretty much it. Um, sneaking is pointless. What else is there? Eventually you unlock even more powerful moves than you already have. Like, uh, if you're a powerhouse, you can unlock a suplex and rip the zombie in half as you're lifting them up. If you're using rifles, you can get yourself bullet time. If you're using swords, you can chop their legs off. It's, it's just crazy how easy the game becomes. State of Decay has a day and night cycle. A day is one hour long, and a night is also one hour long. Both of these are in real time. So, let's use some basic logic here. We can safely assume that two hours of real time is equivalent to 24 hours of game time, right? Th that, that makes sense, right? No. Wrong! A day only passes when you're not playing the game. State of Decay keeps playing itself when you are not. After you're finished with your current playing session and turn the game off, the next time you load it up, as long as a few hours have passed, it simulates what has occurred while you are away, and then, and only then, does an actual day's worth of game time pass. Why is this an important subject to bring up? Well, that's because resources are consumed daily, which is why scavenging is required. But if you're playing the game for a long period of time, no resources are getting used up. If you're playing the game in short bursts, lots of resources are getting used up. Here, l let me use an example. Me. Let let's take a look at me. Myself. I'm currently unemployed. I don't have a girlfriend. I don't really have any responsibilities or things to take care of, except apply for jobs and hope the cunts answer back. As a result, I have a lot of free time on my hands, most of which is spent on massive alcohol consumption and Dota. Which is why when I purchased State of Decay, I played it for 8 hours non-stop. Then I sat there and I was wondering, I'm like, hmm... I just went through like, 4 day and night cycles. Surely 4 days should have passed. Why are... Why are my resources not declining? Now let's take the life of a quote-unquote normal person. Uh, this, let's say this person is married, has a child, possibly two, has a mortgage, a, a job. This person's free time is obviously limited. Let's assume this person can only play for two hours every other day. That means every time this person loads up their game, gone are 15 supplies of food, 10 supplies of materials, 5 supplies of medicine, 3 crates of ammunition, and so on and so forth. To summarize, if you play the game for two hours, then come back to it five hours later, bye bye 15 supplies of food, and, and so on and so forth. But if you play the game for five hours straight, you don't lose a single unit of supply. In theory, you can just keep your game indefinitely paused if you don't want to lose anything. But anyways, this is what you have to do to make sure your inept companions don't kill themselves, each other, run away, get killed by zombies, and the same goes for the randomly generated enclaves. Before you turn the game off, you need to make sure the morale in your home is high that there are no zombie hordes next to your home, that there are no zombie infestations next to your home, that you have enough resources, that there are no personal issues within the compound, that there are no allies that need to be rescued, and so on and so forth. All of these things, well, with the exception of resources, are randomly generated events that annoyingly occur very 
frequently are generic as all hell and are completely contrived. Why does the game keep sending out the guy I never used on scavenger runs? This fucking idiot gets surrounded by zombies every fucking time he leaves the goddamn compound and I have to go and rescue his ass. Why can't I select who goes out on the scavenger runs? Why is it that five zombie hordes just spawned out of nowhere? The entire western portion of the city of Marshall is a complete safe zone thanks to the strategic placement of the outposts I created. Where the fuck are these zombies coming from? What is this clown car bullshit? I swear I killed more zombies than there were people in this fucking hillbilly town. Why do infestations spawn in the utmost stupidest places on the map? As I said before, the western portion of the city is almost a complete safe zone aside from like these three little houses. My base and outposts cover everything else. Oh, a new infestation mission. Ten minutes later. Oh, another infestation. Thirty minutes later. Oh, wow, another one. Gee. Where are all these spawning? Of course. Those three houses that are not part of the safe zone. Can this possibly get any more contrived? These things constantly spawn and are so annoying. Why is it that one of my companions always managed to get themselves in trouble with zombies right next to the friendly enclave, the Grange? What the fuck is she doing there? I took all the resources from that area ages ago. And why aren't they helping her? Hey, fuck faces! They're eating her alive! I help fortify your base, I build you a motherfucking watchtower, I fix your relationship problems, and this is how you motherfuckers are paying me? And that's just the stuff you have to do for your own people. You wanna help other enclaves? Guess what? They're gonna be asking for you to do the same exact shit, but for them instead. And sometimes, they'll get besieged by zombies and request for your help. These are the worst parts of the game. When you come help them, you fight waves of zombies for like 5 to 10 minutes. All the AI companions do. All they fucking do is stand there and board up the fucking windows. Where are you getting the fucking hammer and nails from? How come everyone in this game is lugging around an infinite supply of wood planks? Why can't I use these fucking wood planks as construction materials in my own fucking base? Your best bet to get through these sections is to actually walk outside and kill the zombies who are hitting the windows because they're gonna keep fucking hitting them while the AI will sit there and keep reboarding them. You can always go back to the beginning of this video and see how two of the strongest zombies in the game cannot operate doors. State of Decay has a fantastic bug, which I had the pleasure of experiencing. Basically, some story missions create a group called Desperate Survivors. These are immortal people who only come to existence solely for one mission and then spend the rest of the game sitting in a house not doing a damn thing. Zombies ignore them and they can't die. If you progress through the game too quickly, then these unrecruitable immortal survivors end up taking spawn slots of recruitable mortal survivors. As a result, my first playthrough only had two non-story generated enclaves. One of them died because they were besieged and were on the complete other side of the map. The other one ended up joining me. I'm so glad they did because one of them was an alcoholic, a smoker, and had a fucked up leg, but supposedly he was a good cook. He was such a good cook that he poisoned the food and himself, not once, not twice, but three fucking times, then had the audacity to complain about it. The most annoying missions are the morale issue ones. It doesn't matter how much supply you have, how many weapons you have, how safe you are, some jackass is still going to become depressed or scared or suicidal, or two assholes are going to fight with each other, it's still going to happen. The dining room is supposed to cure this, but guess what, building a dining room is completely and utterly fucking pointless. That facility doesn't do a goddamn thing. The solution to, to cure this depression or f fucking whatever they have is to take them out, go for a fucking walk, have four to five lines of awful dialogue, kill zombies in a building that was empty five minutes ago, come back home, and that makes things all better. Once again, if you want to have things to not go completely batshit the next time you load up your game, you have to have enough resources while constantly doing everything that I just mentioned. All that bullshit, and all that bullshit constantly spawns. The zombie types are the same that we've seen before, really. Armored swats are like the hazmats from Left 4 Dead, Bloaters are like bloats from Killing Floor, fuck, they even have the same name. Screamers are sirens. Spheros are like hunters, except they actually hurt like hell. 
and the juggernauts, uh, big bastards, big uns, whatever the hell the game wants to fucking call them, are like tanks. There's so many more things I can go on complaining about. How come I can only carry one rucksack filled with supplies? Why can't I put another one in the trunk of the car I'm using, or, or the back of the fucking pickup? Why don't the cars use fuel anyways? I'm honestly better off making two trips, because if I call in the scavenger, that fucking idiot is somehow gonna get trapped by zombies. And why is it if I ask another survivor to accompany me, they don't loot with me, or carry a rucksack, or just run away to base if I start a mission? Why don't the survivors ever do anything themselves? Why don't they even take the fucking car when I call in a scavenger? That's so stupid. Why? He's a big one. So big one? I don't care. Maybe he's a small one, but nice. a big one. Let's go. If he's getting hit by a car that's going 100 miles per hour, I think he should already. be dead. Let's get out of here. She was just standing in the middle of the field. Hey, she got worry. lost. Yeah. So she's got amnesia. <laughs> she's got Thanks. Alzheimer's problem. Hey, how are you? Oh, look, there's another big one. <laughs> Where? I'm missing both front wheels now. A big zombie makes your rubber disappear in your wheels. Makes a lot of sense. Oh, my wheels are gone. <laughs> so Look, my wheels are gone. I know, I see. Look. Twitch is lagging again. Fucking <laughs> shit cancer. Why does every single character have the exact same line of dialogue? How come characters that were not around for a certain event, when later playing as them, act as if they were? Why is the game so fucking easy? How come I didn't lose a single character unless their death was scripted? Why do characters level up so fast? Seriously, Marcus was already almost maxed out in every stat when I moved my home to a different site. Speaking of home sites, there's only seven, and only two of them are any good. One of the two isn't even fucking available to you until you're three missions away from beating the game. What's the point of that? What's the point of all the other ones? By the time I got to the last mission, I had practically five characters who were invincible. I kept getting scared of the notion of permadeath, so I tried playing as, as many characters as possible, and I gave each one a unique specialization. At one point, I literally ran into a zombie horde as Sam, and came away almost unscathed simply because I killed every single zombie in either one or two hits using the sword or the shotgun. closest I came to death was during nighttime, when I was doing a survey mission as Maya. On my way down from the tower, I got jumped on by a feral. I climbed the tower back up and I was worried on what I was gonna do. This is was this was the second character that you get in the game. And I almost had her maxed out and everything as well. I don't wanna lose her. She was suffering from internal bleeding and needed medical attention right away. Jesus Christ, come on, climb, 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 please. Oh my god. Switch characters. Sat on top of the tower Helper. for like about five minutes until I created <laughs> a plan. I'd switch characters to Take fucking Marcus OP there. Marcus, who would run to her rescue. After switching to Marcus, I wondered what would happen if I'd switch back to Maya. So I decided to try it out. And guess what happened? Maya immediately you do? returned to base. Are you fucking kidding me? Oh, wow. As long as you're not on a mission, you can switch to any character that you are friends with. If the character is away from home, if that is what their status is, then they will be automatically teleported back to base. That is fucking unbelievable. In State of Decay, 
After the tutorial section is over, Marcus, Ed, and Maya basically lose their personalities and become just as generic as the randomly generated survivors you encounter. Your home is a lifeless area. No one ever talks to each other or even says a word. Even if you have a dining room, you'll never see your survivors getting together for an actual fucking dinner. The fights that your survivors have between each other are always off screen. Every now and then, the most you'll ever hear is some absurd complaint. Oh, we don't got enough medicine in here. How do they expect us to survive? Are, are you fucking serious? We have so much medicine that we can't even store it all. Also, the ending is fucking garbage. I'm not gonna spoil it, but it's an absolute joke. If you want a comparison, think Halo 2. Yeah, it's that bad. The game just feels unfinished overall. Uh, the map may seem large, but it's virtually lifeless. There's three towns and the third one is not accessible until you're almost done with the game. There is some awesome looking scenery like downed helicopters, a downed airplane that's still burning, a humongous, enormous fucking building that is fenced off with quarantine notices all around it, but these are all just props. You can't explore any of them. I mean, and, and if you're not in one of the towns, you're just in deserted fields that are barren. There are some areas of the game that are marked as potential home sites, but you can't build a home there. You can't do anything with them. Why, why are they even listed as potential home sites? There are also four emotes that you can use, all which are pretty much pointless. Um, I guess these are leftovers from when they were trying to develop an MMO and realized they couldn't afford to do something like that, so they made this single-player game instead. I mean, cheering can improve uh, trust during a mission, and taunting attracts zombies, but that, that's about it. I've never seen agree or disagree fucking do anything. I started a second playthrough of State of Decay and tried to make my experience as difficult as possible. The game gave me a much better dice roll and spawned four sets of randomly generated enclaves. It's a bit sad that one's enjoyment of a game can be dependent on how it decides to allocate its own resources. I set my home in what were supposed to be two of the hardest locations to defend, the Bakridi farmhouse and the Alamo. The farmhouse is in the middle of nowhere and most hordes and special zombies spawn in the fields. I ended up getting myself and Alan killed by scavenging for food uh, in the fields. It's a bit sad that after putting 36 hours into the game, I only saw one death animation, but my god, they're actually very well done. After setting the nearby barn as an outpost, I found out Using the farmhouse as a base is more of a chore than anything else. You're protected from hordes now, but you're still in the middle of nowhere and driving takes forever. Then I decided to move to the Alamo, which is a small restaurant in Marshall. I found this area also extremely easy to defend. Just put four outposts around yourself and that's it. And there's a multitude of buildings everywhere, which literally gave me infinite resources. something's up, unless you're doing story missions, which are bad, there's not much else to do. Scavenging to survive for the next day ultimately takes you about 30 minutes to do. The only supplies you ever really need to look for are food and materials. Everything else gets barely used up. Once you're done scavenging, there's literally nothing else to do aside from the awful, repetitive missions that constantly spawn. Sometimes an enclave will ask for your help, but their missions are the same that your group spams you with. I can't say I enjoyed this game. I had fun for the first few hours, but once I discovered how awful the AI is, how simplistic the mechanics are, and how there's a complete lack of variety in the missions, I grew bored. State of Decay is only around 8-10 to 10 hours long, and has little to no replay value. Story missions, cutscenes, and dialogue are all unskippable. The only difference in your next playthrough will be the location of some resources, and which survivors will be generated. That's it. The only positive things I can say about this game are the soundtrack, which is done by Jesper Kidd, and some of the animations look cool, especially the climbing ones. While State of Decay certainly is better than the utterly broken and unplayable Fort Zombie, and better than the awful Zave House Diaries, it's still a bad game. You're probably better off checking out Project Zomboid instead. No closer. Little closer. Fuck you! Over here! Come and get it! Fuck you! <coughs> Suck it! <coughs> Fuck you! <coughs> Fuck you! <coughs> <coughs>